And that's probably all that is going for for the Tudor Submariner when comparing it with the Rolex. There is a lot of talk out there on whether this here is a better watch compared to the Rolex Submariner. Here are my thoughts on it. The Tudor All New Black Bay 41mm also known as the Black Bay 41 Black or the Black Bay Submariner is one of the latest releases at the Watches and Wonders 2024 Geneva. The BB Submariner comes in three variants. The black rubber strap which is the cheapest among the three, followed by the three link stainless steel bracelet with rivets and finally the Jubilee bracelet. They are all equipped with the Tudor's T-Fit claps. In my last video, I've talked about the BB58 GMT where we've discussed about the rubber strap and the three-link bracelet with rivets and which among the two do I prefer. Hence, I won't be talking much about them here. If you've missed that video, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Do make sure you give me a like in both these videos, okay? With regards to the Jubilee bracelet, I personally feel that this is a better looking bracelet when compared to the Rolex Jubilee bracelet. And that's because when one looks at the side profile of the Tudor's bracelet, you will find a complete oval shaped polished link instead of a half circle link as seen in the Rolex. And that's probably all that is going for for the Tudor Submariner when comparing it with the Rolex. Bear with me okay, I will explain everything at the end of this video. Now let's first talk about its rudimentary details. The stainless steel case here is polished on its side and bevel and brushed on its front and lugs. There are no holes on the lugs giving it a clean look. However, there are also no easy removal mechanism on the strap and bracelet which I think is the basic sine qua non for modern watches these days, don't you think? The closed case back protects the MT5602-U caliber which is a self-winding mechanical movement with bidirectional rotor system. It is COSC and META certified. It has a precision of 5 seconds range each day, tested at 2 temperatures in 6 different positions and at 2 different power reserve level, i.e. 100% and 33%. While this may be a diver watch giving it 200 meters of water resistance, it does not have any crown guards on it. The screw down crown has the Tudor rose boss on it. The notches and ridges on the crown is rather deep and wide, unlike those on my BB58 which has a rather blunted ridges. I personally prefer the sharp ridges on the BB Submariner as it does help with the grip. The 16 minutes unidirectional bezel is in stainless steel with black aluminum insert. Underneath the Doom Sapphire Crystal is a Doom shaped dial which has white wordings and printings on it and silver coloured applied markers and hands with loom. Upon closer inspection, I find the matte black dial to have brush strokes on it when light hits it at a certain angle. Objectively, when one puts this two doors side by side with a Rolex Submariner 124060, one cannot help but to notice the similarities on them, like how the ID guy puts it, wherever the crown leads, the shoe follows. I mean just look at it, the jubilee bracelet, the black bezel, the design on the markers and the lollipop second hand. Notwithstanding that, Tudor tries very hard to maintain its own identity, its sporty yet vintage inspired looking design such as the lack of crown guards, the huge crown, the snowflake hour hands, sharp ridges on the bezel, doom shaped sapphire crystal and a doom shaped dial. Now I don't know about you but I personally find the case to be a little off. Perhaps it has to do with its dimension and proportion. When comparing it with the Rolex Submariner, never mind the thickness and the awkward luck width, I find the lugs to be rather long, hence giving it a rather disproportionate look. Or perhaps it has to do with the brush polish. If one were to look closely at the Rolex, the polishing on the lugs are stroked vertically and consistent with the bracelet, whereas the polishing on the lugs on the Tudor are stroked in a diagonal fashion. This runs counter with the brush strokes on the integrated part in between the lugs and the bracelet which has a vertical brush strokes. Perhaps this can also be a reason why the color tone on the case and the bracelet are different. The integrated part on the Oyster bracelet of the Rolex is also better looking when compared with the three link bracelet on the Tudor. This is because the central link on the integrated part has a similar length with the center links on the bracelet for the Rolex, whereas the center link on the integrated part for the Tudor has two short center links before hitting the longer links. Then there is that lollipop second hand which I personally think that a snowflake second hand would suit this watch better. Having it there contradicts with the snowflake hour hand. 
The Rolex further trumps the deal though with a bezel which reflects like giving it a more upmarket feel than the matte black bezel. Now, having a price point that is half the price of the Rolex, would you consider this a better buy? I personally think that the Tudor isn't a better watch when compared with the Rolex, however, it is a better buy. No, not because Rolex has a waitlist that is longer than my grandmother's story. Oh my god, who the hell cares? But because there aren't any brands out there that has this level of brand influence, finishing, and a movement that is COSC and Meta certified, all at this price point. Can you think of one? I certainly can't. And for that reason, I think the BB Submariner and the BB58 GMT will be a popular option for many and for a good period of time. Anyway, that's just my thoughts and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, thank you for watching.